Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Tuesday, March 12th. Today on Forbes, here's how much Christopher Nolan made on Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was the big winner at Sunday's 96th Academy Awards. Nolan's atomic bomb biopic took home seven awards at the Oscar ceremony, including Best Picture, Best Director for Nolan himself and his first Oscar, Best Actor for Killian Murphy, Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., as well as the Golden Statues for Cinematography, Editing, and Original Score. Oppenheimer is the highest-grossing Best Picture winner in 20 years, and one of the highest ever with nearly $1 billion in global box office receipts, placing it behind only Lord of the Rings' Return of the King and Titanic. It's the kind of rare critical and commercial success that will boost the careers of many involved. And for director Christopher Nolan, it cements his status as the most bankable auteur in Hollywood. One talent manager who represents A-listers puts it a different way, saying, quote, he's the biggest movie star in the world right now. The 53-year-old Nolan is certainly being paid like one. Forbes estimates he is earning 15% of Oppenheimer's so-called first dollar gross, meaning he gets paid a share of every cent the movie earns even before the studio recoups its expenses. From the box office hall, home video sales, and licensing the movie's first streaming window alone, Nolan will make an estimated $72 million pre-tax after paying fees to his agent and lawyer, from $85 million gross. The total will continue to rise as the movie gets resold to streamers and is licensed for years to come. It's a new career peak for Nolan, a frequent Oscar nominee for directing and screenwriting, who managed to produce a smash hit out of a three-hour movie, partially shot in black and white, about the life of a theoretical physicist. Even with his headier movie concepts, Nolan has excelled at creating the spectacle that still draws audiences into theaters, whether it's a Paris street bending on top of itself in Inception, passing through the eye of a black hole in Interstellar, or detonating an atomic bomb in Oppenheimer. Every studio movie he has produced, since first partnering with Warner Brothers for 2002's Insomnia, has grossed at least $100 million at the box office. And six of his last seven films, most notably the final two Dark Knight films, have grossed more than $500 million. The seventh, Tenet, was released in the thick of the pandemic and still tallied an impressive $350 million. That track record made Nolan a cornerstone of Warner Brothers. But in December 2020, after the studio announced it would be putting all theatrical releases on its streaming service the same day, Nolan took his disappointment public. He told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, Some of our industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find out they were working for the worst streaming service. He added, quote, They don't even understand what they're losing. The most notable loss, it turned out, was Nolan. When it came time to sell his next project in September 2021, Executives from Paramount, Sony, Universal, and Apple were summoned to his office in the Hollywood Hills to read the Oppenheimer script, as Nolan famously keeps his scripts offline, and make their pitch. With multiple studios angling for the prestige project, Nolan had the leverage to demand several preconditions for potential partners, including a $100 million production budget, relatively modest by his standards, another $100 million for marketing, total creative control, an extended theatrical window, a blackout period during which the studio would not release anything in the weeks before and after his movie, and 20% of first dollar gross. Earning gross points remains Hollywood's ultimate indication of power. Among actors, the deal term has been all but eliminated, other than a small handful of older stars such as Tom Cruise. Even for multi-hyphenate filmmakers, it's reserved for the highest echelon of reliable moneymakers, such as Steven Spielberg, James Cameron, and Peter Jackson. Eventually, Universal's studio head, Donna Langley, agreed to Nolan's conditions and landed Oppenheimer. Sources tell Forbes that Nolan's deal with Universal included 15% of the gross rather than the 20 he sought, though the discrepancy could come from the participation of Emma Thomas, Nolan's wife and producing partner of more than 20 years. In the case of first dollar gross deals, all upfront fees are in advance against the back-end participation. But in order to stay within the proposed budget, Nolan would have had to reduce his guaranteed fees for directing, writing, and producing than he could have otherwise commanded. The deal he struck with Universal was the ultimate bet on himself. 
For full coverage, check out our Forbes Talks interview with reporter Matt Craig, and check out Matt Craig's piece itself on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.